I think it's first thing with us. Ha, Uti and Sansi. <laughs> now, according to a report by Cable NG published on the 3rd of March, the headline read, suspected herders were paid 15 million in ransom after kidnapping two farmers in Shalo Shalabo village, located between Isiwu and Imota areas of Lagos State. Now, the report further explained that the victims were abducted Tuesday 25th of February 2021 on their farm. The owner of the Ikorodu Integrated Farm had just returned to the country from the UK and visited the farm with his brother where they were both kidnapped. Now, the kidnappers first demanded a ransom of 10 million, but later increased it to 20 million before a middle ground of 15 million was reached. Now, according to them, they said, we contacted the Imota police station to officially report and through the help of some individuals, we were able to get the commissioner, the Lagos State Commissioner of Police, that's CP Hakim Odumoso, who ass assured us that his men have been deployed. However, the abductors then increased the ransom from 10 million to 20 million and threatened the, to do the unthinkable if the money is not made available. So again, they said, we contacted the police again to update them with the latest demand of the kidnappers, but we were told to cooperate with them in view of the safety of the victims. So we had no choice but to run around for the money. We, we sold the farm in question, we sold our cars, our houses, and eventually raised 10 million, but the kidnappers insisted we must pay 20 million before our brothers can be released. Eventually, 15 million naira was sec um, secured their release. Now, this is just one out of hundreds of thousands of kidnapped victims across Nigeria. So our question tonight is, who are the real business owners of insecurity in Nigeria? Let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow, or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 You know, just by when we were having this conversation about the job role and everything, I'm just wondering, will I go and sit down and work hard and toil after one month, collect a 15,000 naira salary or 30,000 naira salary, when I can just sit down, mastermind the plan of kidnapping, and the next thing I'm getting 20 million, 15 million, 100 million as ransom. Mm -hmm. Insecurity has become a big business in Nigeria. You know, there's no doubt about it. And, you know, I want to go back to, um, because every time I remember, I, I think of how I went through Sharia crisis when I was growing up in Kaduna. It was a very, very swift um, response from um, then Obas um, President Obasanjo. It was so swift. Like people, if, if, if anything should happen, they say, oh, Sharia crisis has started again. The next thing you'll say, we didn't, under 24 hours, Uti, the whole place will be flooded with military men. They declare curf um, what's it called? Um, curfew and all of that. But now it has just become so it's so normal that now is with the with the boldness at which they do this thing so you're so scared i am i went to abuja the other day i couldn't go to kaduna i was so afraid because i don't know who knows me and whatever mm -hmm. so insecurity like kidnapping and all of that is it just now because with all of this somebody was saying that this particular case might have been an inside job because of course they saw he was coming from the uk and all of that but is it just that because when they contacted police even police telling you what's he, just cooperate with them Come on, what does this tell you? <laughs> and also, but, another thing I question is when they get these monies from the ransom, how are they able to like do the payment in with all the BVN they, and they the money limits? Cash. It's cash. Yeah, I know cash, but you don't, well, some bury it anyway. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> yeah. No, um, I just, it was funny when you were talking and you were talking about the police and the police asking them to cooperate. And that is not a new concept. I remember my friend getting robbed um, just in Ikeja here and she had the find my phone function on her phone mm -hmm. and they traced the phone so she got the police and they traced the phone to a street in Mushing. Mm -hmm. So literally about maybe 200 meters I think she was saying just down the like looking at the street this is the entrance of the street she and the police are standing here her phone is beeping just over there and the police says madam if you know the amount of weapons mm. and boys on this street, we are not going in there with you, ma. Your phone is lost. And she went, oh. So what? if now we're talking bandits of 20 million, 10 million, you know, we call it now like it's 10 naira, 5 naira. Yeah. You know, we're band banding these numbers around. And then police, of course. And then you want to ask the question that says, is the police now just... Because you have to, to sort of break it down, try to, 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 to distill it. 
Is it that the police is in that state that says, I'm helpless. We know who these guys uh. are, we're helpless? Is the police complicit? Is a portion of that 20 million going to the police? Going to the police? So many questions that you have to ask because when the body that is meant to provide security and safety says to you, oh, go ahead and pay a ransom, what are we, the citizens, what, the indigents? <laughs> Indigent, we're not citizens anymore. What are, we, <laughs> what are we, the indigents, supposed to do? Because if you, that your job is to secure my life, my property, my safety, are telling me, you know what, go ahead and pay these guys, then you're absolutely right. Help us. Why take 30K when all of us can come together Put the monies together, buy a few weapons, and... Okay. And you know, the interesting thing is, when this kidnap case started, it was mostly just politicians. Mm -hmm. They were the ones who were scared for their lives. And then, over a period of time, it became like normal human beings. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you would ask the average Nigerian, they would tell you, as at then, they would tell you, this is probably politicians trying to discredit themselves, yeah. trying to make the other party look bad, so the other one will come into power. But right now, I think it has grown Snowball beyond that, effect. such that, yeah. Okay. So it's, it's like a norm right now, sadly. Weapons, because you mentioned mm -hmm. weaponry. Mm -hmm. Do we have the license to carry guns as citizens in Nigeria? No, we don't. So whoever is importing weapons into this country must definitely have licenses to be able to, you know, import those weapons into the country. Well, you and I cannot just import. Or, or, no, it's a question. Is it Smugly? possible? Is it possible they raid police stations and take the guns? No, that sir. one is just a... That, I'm, I'm just, just asking. Raiding, even if it was happening, the raiding police stations is like... How many weapons will you get? Yes. yes. There are, what we must first acknowledge and agree, is that there are far too many weapons in Nigeria. In circulation. In the hands of the wrong people, there are just far too many. Do you remember... Um, I think During it was Jonathan's last president, year Jonathan's two years ago. time, yeah, they when, were seizing container. Thank you. That's where I was going. Oh, yeah, Do you remember true. when they kept finding them at the port? They'll say this, this coming and that coming. So we must agree, whether by smuggling, whether legitimately via um, our armed forces, our police, whatever. These weapons are getting into the country. And given that our borders are so porous, mm -hmm. I'm more inclined to say, look, smuggling is the way. Our entire northern side of the country. The borders are, here's your grass, here's my grass. Let's move on. Yeah, but even if smuggling is the way. Mm -hmm. the, the, the point is, even if it's going to be smuggled, right? There are, I mean, when I, when I travel to Ocean State to check drop off my children, mm -hmm. like you, you will meet several. So what is the point? What is the goal of that? Check? Let me tell you something. Somebody just has to look away for this to happen. And we are begging the government because this thing is becoming too much. You know, like, I cannot sleep anymore. Everybody's afraid, like, you know. That, that is look so at what has happened with, sorry, um, Sansi, look at what has right. happened with kidnapping of large number of girls, large number of school pupils. The next thing you say, they are, they are negotiating with, her, um, what's it called, bandits and trying to, to, to raise a ransom mm. for them to be paid. Why would they not keep kidnapping when I can just sit down and fold yeah, my arms? Yeah, you know? something and the federal government listens so to So yesterday you I picked a story about helicopters dropping up, uh, dropping off weapons, you know, to, um, at, um, at different places. So they were, the Iraq Consultative Forum, where they, they asked the president that please also declare, as, 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 outside no of this, declaring Zamfara a no flight zone, declare some other states a no flight zone. So these people, it's not like they don't know. Uti, do you have, a, an, a, you have an helicopter? It's a question. It is the people that have the money that can afford to carry an, a, a, a helicopter and fly and go and dump this thing. So are we really serious in fighting this business of insecurity? Or we no, have made but, it a business? No, no, but if we were serious, we wouldn't have it. You know, what, I mean, come, come so on. at the end of the day, it so, boils down to the government. Well, you know, if we were serious, we wouldn't have it. Which is why I still asked that question yesterday. That look, I just want to know, please, what's your end game? Because it, like, it cannot be money. How much can you spend? I mean, that, that's my own childlike take of it. Because I'm like, really, how much money in your lifetime can you really well, spend? The thing is, it's not really about so the lifetime. So, what's about... the end game? Because there must be something. Is it? I mean, even power. What, what is your end game? Because I've, I sit down sometimes and I try to think about it and I'm like, what is it? Because you are not openly a beneficiary. You're not openly supporting. But somehow these people are getting their weaponry. They're not being found. Even when international forces try to, to help, it's not, they're never given the support and the straight line access to do what they need to do. So please, I would like somebody to just tell me, 
what is the end game? Do you want Nigeria to divide? Do you want Nigeria? Because even if we're in a, well, I guess people make money in war. So maybe that's it. But we are not at perpetual war. Perpetual state of chaos. No, I, perpetual state of chaos that we're in now. The northwest, mm. the northeast, whether it's Boko Haram, whether it's banditry, whether it's Cameroon, that's refugees, right. whatever. The whole country. So, I mean, somebody is gaining. Somebody is profiting. If not, it would not still be there. happening. So who is the person who is profiting? Is it Aha. the federal government or who is it? Because if it's not the federal government, then the federal government has the power to stop whoever because as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> you're the highest ranking authority in the country. I mean, I am just I've thinking. I've looked for you in this country before. As police decided to look for you. There's nobody. <laughs> Let's not even See. talk military. There is nobody that is the police is trying to fish out that they would not fish out. So the point... When they are sufficiently motivated. <laughs> that, that, that's exactly what I'm like, saying. So it is tiring. Yeah, what I'm saying is the federal government has the power to fish out whoever this person is. So if it's not you who is sponsoring it, what stops you as the number one person in charge of this entire territory called Nigeria, right? I don't know if they are godfathers or whatsoever, but me, that I'm a citizen... Indigen, I see you as <laughs> I see you as the man, the guy at the top. So what stops you from putting in measures year after year after year after year? It's okay. getting worse. So when this Boko Haram thing started, mm -hmm. I remember. Okay, I think all of these things. Should we? Can we trace it down to militancy? Is it possible that okay, people saw how it was so juicy and lucrative for the uh, Niger Delta Niger militants, Delta. you know, to be given amnesty and mm -hmm. all of that? Can Which we right now they're because, calling out the amnesty is not working there because we are tr we're tr let us try to even lay a foundation where this thing became a business, where it became lucrative, mm -hmm. where somebody just said, ah, ah, okay, wait, wait, wait a minute, it's yeah. like ah, ah, if I do two and two like this, here. because yeah, I remember when when President John, then President Jonathan during the his tenure. You know, I remember someone was telling us with strong authority that the JTF guys, they were busy buying houses in Banana Island, right? Where you were busy collecting, uh, what's it called, security funds to fight security. So you are asking what end game is this? This is just a show of, you know what, I want to be able to uh, gather money. Nigerians, anything goes for money. Yeah. We do not value human life. We do not value what, you know, what, what, like I can't see you and say genuinely I want you to grow. Mm. This is and this is what has it has played out with all of these things that are happening. So I'm I'm trying to wrap my head around I, I'm around the insecurity challenges. So it's sort of like of our power is independence. My ability to keep you dependent on oh. me makes me powerful. Oh. So I use whatever avenue that is available to keep you dependent on me, whether it's by terrorizing you or by poverty or by food scarcity or by stealing your farmlands or whatsoever it is just to keep you dependent on me. What you've just said now is exactly what has happened with politics over the years. Let's kill the educational se sector mm. so that these young people do not even know what they want. So whatever it is that will come every four years to dance in front of them, they will buy, they will it. buy it and will be able to sell. You see, for the one thing that we have neglected in this country, it has, it, we've seen the ripple effect. And this is where we are at today. I sent a video today of the young boy that was hacking and all of that. Mm. In, a, uh, in a Senate climb, that kind of boy is supposed to be walking... Yes, with maybe EFCC or whatever, forensics, because mm. how the guy was explaining how he gets a SIM and he's able to enter your account and collect money and all of that. For me, that was intelligence gathering. Hired. So those kind of people are... In, so it is not for lack of intelligence that we have in this country, but for the fact that everybody has so, has so um, relegated anything called hard work. Let me just sit down and settle down and just sit down and be collecting Self. ransom. It's what I do not get. You know, and the government don't even seem like they want to even fight this insecurity. Mm. So let us take some comments, then we'll probably take a break and open the phone lines. All right. Okay, so should I go um, first? I think you should go good, first. Good, good ladies, I am so sorry Nigeria has no security plan. Nigeria is like a sheep in the ocean without a captain. My advice to Nigerians uh, is should, should, should be to wake up from their slumber. Kidnapping has turned a multi business in Nigeria. Our politicians need to be questioned. That's Tony uh, from Munich, Germany. Um, mm. So, uh, yeah, so this says, please, what form of deterrence happened to the famous Evans the kidnapper? His crime then was considered gruesome. But what is happening now looks like child's play compared to what he did. The insecurity situation has fully matured almost like a way of life for us now, sadly. And that's from Benson. 
All right, so this is from Raphael Akori in Zaria. It's he, he says, no politician wants to become an IDP. That's internally displaced politician in our country. That's why no one at the corridor of power is speaking the truth uh, to the power over the security. This insecurity is just a phase, and it will soon be a thing of the past. Good will always prevail over evil. I, I like the so. positivity. I, I like the positivity, so. Raphael from Zaria, but uh, it is well. Mm. So this is uh, Tommy Lola uh, from um, Bag uh, Ogba, I think, Lagos. She says, I wonder why the bandits keep ex um, escaping without being apprehended by the law enforcement. Are they spirits or what is the meaning of this? This is really so annoying. Can't drones be, be deployed to track this useless bandit? I am really upset. Like, it is so upsetting. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how to express the anger that I feel. If us it, it gets upsetting, sorry, UT. Mm -hmm. Like, when you look at the amount of gadgets or equipment that was brought out to fight innocence and SARS protesters, you wonder why are this kind of equipment not, not deployed, deployed to those areas where you have violence and, you know, all what not. Why, what, what are you keeping it for in Lagos? There's nothing going on in Lagos, you know? So just, just when carry... Layman, mm? <laughs> when layman, you and I, mm. start to talk military strategy, deploy ah, drone, do this, do that, you can safely say, Gary, pass water, water, pass Gary. How, is that? How does that statement go? I don't know. The whole thing is a mess. And you, it, you still come back to that thing that says, let's even take a look at the bigger picture. Let's move away from the north east, the north west. Yes. Okay, let's come away from that. Now look at what's happening in the south. First of all, I like the comment that Benson says that says, when I know there are no repercussions, or I know that, guys, there's money to be made. That's it. We're all sitting down looking for money to drink 200 naira beer, and then somebody, you read somewhere, or you hear on the radio, somebody just made 20 million or 30 million from kidnapping. And they went There are free. plenty bad roads and plenty potholes on our <laughs> roads. I don't travel out of state anymore because I just can't. As much as I love to drive and be on the road, wow. I can't. Okay. Because you don't know. Mm. And then people are being kidnapped. Farmer, I came home. We say agriculture is the future for Nigeria. I set up a farm. The next thing, plus farm, plus property, everything. plus belongings, everything is gone to pay somebody for my security. Mm. Nigeria already has a food security problem. That now is being heightened. Now, let's not forget that this thing, larger picture, is causing wider ethnic divides That's because true. everybody says it's Fulani herdsman. I loved what our guest yesterday said about the Fulani herdsman. They too are victims. Did you not see the video where the Fulani herdsman was saying that cows don't birth AK-47, they birth calf, that the truth is that the, the AK-47 is given to them. This is a strong allegation given to them by the government. But how do we know so that you know wasn't what? Let's take a break. report? We don't know if it's a doctored report. If the government says that video is a doctored report, they should go and arrest the person and let them know who is the person supplying them the guns. But let's but take a break. Okay. When we return from the break, we're going to open up phone lines. We'll continue the conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> 